So let me explain my crazy scheme. The way I'm going to drop balance this drive line is this motor has got to have be slid around in relation to the transaxle in such a way that the drive shaft exactly lines up. If I try to do it while it's on its side, I'm going to be fighting gravity. I got to loosen all these bolts that mount this thing onto the transaxle. If I do that, it's going to be cocking and, you know, I'm going to have to jack things up, and lower things down and fight with all that stuff. I don't relish that fight. I'm bound to lose it. It occurred to me uh, a little bit after I picked up this engine hoist, which is going to be used to remove the engine from the Volvo. If I was to hang this thing such that this is perfectly vertical, hanging in the air, and I loosen these bolts, the only force I'm going to have to fight is none, actually. If I can tap, tap, tap on this stuff while it's hanging there, uh, I can find the center, and the way I'm going to find center is by actually running the motor uh, while it's attached to the transaxle, and just tap, tap, tap in various directions until it basically stops making clicking noises or rubbing noises or noises at all. If I get to a point where it's quiet, I figure it's in the right position. So my first uh, estimate came pretty close to level, but it's not really level. Uh, I'm going to try shortening by one link here and here, and that should... Bring it close. Bye. All right, she's up in the air, and she's more or less level. I even use that little magnet level there. It's within a degree or two, which I think is adequate to my purposes. I just want there to not be stress on the motor, gravity trying to move it, you know, one way or t'other while I'm adjusting it. So the next thing to do is to loosen all the bolts, the mounting bolts for the metal plate to the transaxle and then we'll hook it up to power and get to tapping okay these bolts are all loosened up so this plate should be able to move incrementally I got all the batteries hooked up except for the last one so let's turn it over I'm gonna let you hear the noise it's making now and then after I've tapped and fiddled uh, you can hear the difference in noise if I in fact managed to achieve a quieter uh, <laughs> functioning but we'll give it a whirl now let's okay that's discouraging there's no movement at all I wonder if one of these batteries is just flat dead well, in fact, it's even worse. That battery there actually has a dead short in it. It's only running at, uh, it's got a couple of bad cells. It's like six volts. <laughs> so something happened, uh, probably when it was getting banged around or whatever. It's a really old battery. So I got to come up with another 12 volt battery before I can even proceed with this. So um, this will not get done tonight. Uh, I'm tapped out after buying this thing, so uh, there will be a hiatus before I continue with this video. Welcome back. It's the next day, and uh, I purchased another deep cycle battery. And I got it on closeout because it's October in Minnesota, and marine deep cycle batteries are on sale. Lucky for me, because... I have a feeling in the spring this would be about a hundred bucks more. Okay, so what I did was I checked all the bolts um, to see which ones had no play because they were binding, right? Uh, I found three bolts that were binding. One was too big, I removed it and replaced it with a smaller one. Two I simply removed because the, the holes are going to be, uh, need to be made bigger. 
Now it's running silently. I can see a tiny pulse in this plate. It's tiny, but it's there. And what that's telling me is that um, the actual motor coupler that's on the drive line is a little out of alignment somewhere in there. So I got six bolts in there that I can loosen and maybe that'll pull in or run, run true. And then I can tighten those and then I can tighten this and then the whole thing should be aligned. We'll have to see. Uh, that's the next phase. Be right back. It's actually okay. So it's not perfectly silent, but I mean, I'm dealing with transmission of unknown uh, age and miles. I got a forklift motor that was thrown on the scrap heap. And actually everything's just running and it's very quiet. So I'm going to call it a victory. And if it blows up in the car, I'll say, oops, I was wrong. Thanks for joining.